still waters run deep. Have you ever been fishing? My fish cup with my lipstick on it reminds me of, I like this side, the pretty rainbow trout. And have you ever been fishing? My question is, have you ever been fishing? When I was married to my ex-husband, we used to go fishing a lot. We took the kids fishing a lot. And you'd look at the surface of the water, whether it was on a river like uh, the Rainy River. We used to go up, up northern Minnesota a lot, so we'd go to the Rainy River and Lake the Woods. And you'd look at the surface, and a lot of times, unless the water was really shallow or it was running over rocks and things, you couldn't tell how deep it was. So we used things like depth finders and fish finders to find out how deep the water was so we would be able to find the fish. We were usually fishing for walleyes, so we wanted to be able to catch some walleyes and eat them, of course. So if you've ever been fishing, you know that just looking or by a river or for a walk, you can look at a body of water and just looking at the surface, even if the wind is blowing and there's waves and ripples, and if you throw a rock into the water, you still can't necessarily tell how deep it is. Thus, the invention of depth finders and fish finders, which makes that possible. They actually send out, they technologically, I'm not gonna get into how they work, but they send out different types of, of sound waves or whatever that echo back and measure how deep the water is. They're so sophisticated now, and I haven't looked at one for probably been 10 years since I've looked at and been fishing in a boat with a fish finder. But when we used to, you could actually see the rocks and the surfaces and the things underneath the water. They had gotten so sophisticated 10 years ago. So I can imagine now you can practically see like your television screen, how clear and precise the water is and how deep it is. But what does this have to do with our idiom today, our expression, still waters run deep? Well, often what we see on the surface is not what's underneath. Uh, this is a Latin expression. It comes from Rome and Quintius, here I have to look at his name because it's so weird. Quintius Rufus Curtius wrote Alexander the Great and he used a similar expression that means basically a placid exterior often hides a passionate or subtle nature. And just because somebody is quiet on the surface or shy on the surface doesn't mean that they're not intelligent. They're often very intelligent. They're often very intelligent and interesting. Now, I went to engineering school, so I'm used to being around a lot of still waters types, people that are quiet on the exterior, but super duper smart and thoughtful on the interior. And I learned back then, you can't judge a book by its cover. I didn't want to be judged by the way I looked because I was very different than most of my engineering peers. And I didn't want to judge them by the way they looked. And you know, it's, it's fun to get to know people and find out what they know, what they're interested in. Always reminds me of that iceberg meme that goes around on the internet that, you know, what we see is only just the tip of the iceberg. It's only a teeny tiny bit of anyone or anything. We, we see what people want us to see. We see what we'll allow ourselves to see. And we need to be careful in our businesses, especially when we're uh, approaching anything that way. People, processes and systems, our own behavior, our own uh, personal development and how we show up in the world. We know from a personal standpoint that what people see of us in different situations is only a little bit of piece of us. What our kids see of us as parents is slightly different and a, a, a piece of us. What our corporate peers or our business associates or our customers see of us is, is slightly a different piece of us. But the whole us, the whole person is something that, heck, we don't even wanna see all of us most of the time. So what does this have to do with our businesses? Well, it reminds me to remember that what's on the surface isn't necessarily what's there and what's deep. It could be calm on the surface, but just because something's calm on the surface and looks like it's smooth sailing, doesn't mean there isn't a storm brewing or uh, passionate feelings or intelligence or a lot of things going on behind the scenes. Uh, when we're handling information, how we handle information, when we're thinking about the competition, dealing with the competition, what we see of our competition, even if we dig deep and do a lot of research and ask a lot of questions and investigate, we still only are gonna ever see the top little bit of what they want us to see. Uh, our customers, we have to really dig deep and investigate our customers to find out what makes them tip, what's important to them, what problems they have that we have the ability and the desire to solve for them, what we can help them with. Uh, research and development, how deep are we gonna go? How deep are we gonna investigate and look into things? How are we gonna let uh, 
what we see and what we investigate inter interact with I was gonna say interact with but I mean influence our decisions and our decision-making ability uh, there's so many ways to look at this uh, comparisonitis is another one that comes to mind you know when we compare ourselves or our business to other people and other people's businesses we forget that their experiences are extremely different than ours and when we compare ourselves to others we're always going to come up short in some way shape or form so instead of comparing ourselves and our business to others let's just continuously improve and make our business better so still waters run deep i love this i actually really love this i don't know that i've said it very often maybe a couple of times in my life i've i've commented that you know still waters run deep in a person usually in a person not i don't know that i've ever applied it to a business but usually in a person that i know that other people don't know and i might know them at a much deeper level than other people do and i'll say yeah they might be calm and mellow on the surface but they are so smart and so thoughtful and so interesting that they're a person worth getting to know it's a company worth doing business with so make sure that uh the what you're sharing with the world is what you want to share with the world knowing that and remembering it's always important to remember that what you see is not always what you get anywhere in the world with yourself as well as with other people and other organizations especially in the online world i've learned that over the last couple of years all right that's our expression that's our idiom that's our proverb for today still waters run deep and I'd love to know your experience with this, what your thoughts, what your feelings, what your experience has been with this. I, I was going to talk about my grandpa. I had two grandpas and uh, my dad's dad and my mom's dad. And they were both uh, incredibly intelligent people. And my, my mom's dad was very soft-spoken, very witty. And every word that came out of his mouth was so smart, but he didn't speak very often. My dad's dad, on the other hand, was uh, a an incredibly intelligent man. My sisters and I, when he came to visit us every year. We would just not bring our books home from school because any topic we were studying, he could tell us much more deeply and much more intimately about that topic. And so he was kind of the opposite. You knew how smart he was, but my other grandpa, my grandpa Pitch, sometimes he was so quiet, people underestimated him, but he was as, as much a genius, if not more so, than my other grandpa who was very, um, very smart and very wise and, and taught us so many things. All right, that's it. Have an awesome day. I'm rambling. Go about your day. And I will, of course, be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. What does it mean? Where does it come from? And how might you use it in your life and your business right now?